So it's finally time again for the spring home tour. And this year I have quite a few different things that I'm excited to show you that I've been working on since the last um, home tour video, which would have been Christmas. So you can probably already see one of the changes, which is I painted this room. So I'll show you a few new paint colors around the house and some new decorations and of course some spring decor. If you happen to follow my Christopher Heidemann Vlogs YouTube channel, you may notice some of this content may seem a little bit repetitive because I know I've touched on um, some of the new paint colors and a few of the new decorations in some of those videos, but I promise you there are some new things that will be in this video too. So with that, let's get started on the tour. <laughs> So the very first room I wanted to show you is the entryway. So I've changed this around quite a bit since last Christmas. Um, I found this cool rug at Target, which I really like the colors because they're kind of muted blues. And so I got that to add to the entryway just to dress it up a little bit. And then um, this dresser was of course already here, but this mirror is new. So this is something that we had in the basement and have had in the basement for quite a while, but I didn't like the finish. And so I finally took the time to paint it gold so that it would kind of go with the decor in the entryway just a little bit more. The thing I liked about it is it adds a little more height to the entryway just because it is a taller mirror. I'll see if I can back up so you can actually um, see it here. So yeah, that was a very fun project just to paint the finish. Um, I've been asked in other videos how I painted this mirror and it was quite a process because I painted it gold and then I think I dry brushed over it with a bronze and then I did kind of um, some watered down black paint and then kind of rubbed some metallic reds and greens on it to give it a little bit of an iridescent look. So. There was quite a few different techniques used to achieve this um, golden finish, but definitely worth the effort and very happy now to have something on the wall in here. And then over here are some little hooks that I got at an antique shop and this umbrella I got at the same antique shop as well. I just really liked the amber colored handle and just the very kind of caramel colored um, fabric of the umbrella. And I don't know if at Christmas time I had shades, but my grandma actually found me shades that fit this lamp. So it looks a little bit more finished to me now. And so here is some of the Easter decor. So I kind of chose muted natural Easter colors. And I added this broom because I liked kind of the tones of greens in it and thought it went well with everything. And you may notice this little tree that I um, faux plant that we, I put together in one of my previous videos. And then I just found these eggs at Michael's and cut some twine and hot glued it to the top to make a loop so that I could decorate my little tree as a little Easter egg tree. And over here, I just have this Easter sign and some artificial floral. And of course, my regular um, decor of these flower frogs and um, a candle. So then through here is the fireplace room. So this is one of the three rooms that I've painted recently. I was kind of hesitant to paint it this dark blue color, but I'm so happy I did because it really just makes the decor stand out on the walls. I love the way the color looks with the fireplace mantle wood. And um, I mean, just the way it makes the spinning wheel stand out. So I'm very, very happy with this paint color and it just, it just the trim too, really, really makes the trim stand out. 
Another thing I did recently was add a few more crystals to this chandelier in the fireplace room. And this is how I decorated the fireplace mantle for spring. So of course I have my cute little bunny over here. That was a fun home goods find. And this new mantle clock that, or I should say new vintage mantle clock that I got at a local antique shop. And then an Easter egg, of course. And then across the mantle, I have this lamb's ear garland that I use some little tiny clothespins to hold some more vintage Easter postcards. This one was really, really pretty. It has kind of a metallic gold um, accents to it. So I got my little bunny on this table along with an arrangement of artificial floral, actually two arrangements of artificial floral. And again, even more um, vintage postcards. So here's just a few more of the Easter and birthday designs that I have. And I finally got my paper whites planted, so I'm excited to see what those look like when they grow and bloom. And we finally got this mirror hung up in the living room. So this had been in the basement since we had moved in. Um, we had this hung up in our living room in our previous place, but just, I don't know, time kind of flew and we forgot and finally, finally got it hung up here. So very excited for that. And I just like the way that it kind of shows um, different parts of different rooms. Just, I don't know what it is about mirrors. I just um, love decorating with them. And through here is the dining room and the dining room's new paint color. So I chose to do kind of a smoky green color in this room, which I really, really like. And I just, you know, I love the way that it makes the trim stand out and the way it looks with our decor. So this was just kind of a nice um, color to use in here. And I'm not used to using colors in rooms because the last few years I pretty much always choose kind of grays, beiges, or browns. So it was really fun to choose a color for a change. I have kind of the decor on the table fairly minimal. Um, these were just some neat candle holders that I got at Home Goods, And then I found these little um, floral rings at Target. And this is of course that floral arrangement that I made in the one video on my channel. So I did find a place for that. And got my Easter egg wreath hung up on the dining room door. This was something that I found at Home Goods. And over here is the built-in china cabinet. So I have all of my um, green dishes in here. So some people were asking um, if I would give a close-up look of these because I kind of showed just a glimpse of them in a previous video. So I thought I would do that quickly um, just to kind of show you a few of the different pieces. So one thing about all of these dishes is they're made in Portugal. Um, so that's something they all have in common. It's kind of funny, long story short, um, Tim and I went on a vacation. It was pretty much about the only vacation that we've ever went on in like 13 years of being together. Um, but we went to Portugal and when we were there, I was like, oh my gosh, they have green dishes um, that look like my green dishes that I've been collecting for years at home. And so I purchased a few pieces and um, I'll just kind of go through and tell you a little bit about just a few. So I won't spend too, too much time on this. 
Um, these bowls right here, I think I got at Home Goods along with the plate and the big platter, but this one was from Portugal. And I just, I liked the different shape of the leaf and, you know, thought it was neat. And on this row, I have a neat pitcher. And again, the pitcher of the bowls and the large plates, those were all from Home Goods. Um, this was actually from Goodwill. So that was kind of a fun find. And as far as the chicken plates, those, I bought some of them new from a kitchen store when they were on clearance, just probably 10, 12 years ago. They were some of my first pieces of these. And then right after that, when I was at the Goodwill, there was just a stack of like 10 of them. Um, and they included some of these cute ones with the bunnies with the carrots kind of going around. And so um, I of course bought those because they weren't very expensive. So that's where those came from. This was another home goods find and a home goods find. Um, this little guy right here, this was one from Portugal. I just, you know, thought it was really cute. And so um, that's kind of a fun addition to the collection. And again, more of the bowls, more of the plates, more of those. This platter was also from that kitchen store and I bought that at the same time that I bought the little plates. And then this was from Home Goods too. Um, as far as brands, there's different brands across most of these. Um, let's see here. So there's the brand of this one. Now these ones were from um, Home Goods, as you can see, made in Portugal. And these ones that I got at the kitchen store just have the brand or the name of the kitchen store on them. But again, made in Portugal. I, I don't know if it matters if they're made in Portugal or not, but I feel like the ones that I've seen that are not made in Portugal, the coloring is different. I mean, there's a little difference of coloring between some of these, but it's so subtle. But some of the ones that I've seen that were um, not made in Portugal had quite a bit difference in coloring where it was just incredibly noticeable. I'm just gonna see what the brand are on these. And there's that brand. But yeah, um, I just love these dishes. When I first saw these dishes, I just loved the details and of course the coloring of them and just thought this is something that I'm not gonna get sick of. So I would like to start collecting it and just over the years, um, this is how many pieces that I've gotten, so. And while we're on the topic of dishes, I thought I'd just quickly show you. So over here, I have my other china cabinet full of my green depression glass dishes. And I collect a few patterns, quite a few variety of patterns. Um, honestly, when I first started collecting, I just, if I found a piece that was green depression glass, I got it. I, as long as it was in decent shape, I didn't really care what pattern it was. And then after a while I started collecting, um, specific patterns like this one, I have the most of this pattern. So I have these, um, cups and then some dinner plates and some salad plates somewhere in here and tumbler glasses and these coasters, which were kind of different. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a quick look at my Green Depression Glass collection so far. And I've been collecting this for at least 12, 13 years now. So it's taken a while to build up um, this much and I don't usually like to buy things full price. So I like to find things at like thrift stores, um, rummage sales, and sometimes in antique shops where they mark things a little less than they should. But like these goblets, um, I think were an eBay find. And let's see, there's some fun plates. Of course, they're <laughs> under here. These plates I thought were just so cute with the little ships. I've tried to find more of them online, but just haven't found them ever again. So I have a set of like one, two, three, four, five of them, but um, yeah, those were just a fun find. And I think, I think these ones were Etsy. 
but it's just, I love collecting dishes. <laughs> I have to stop myself sometimes because I just, um, I don't know, get a little carried away when I see a dish set that I like and then I just like, how many dish sets do I need? I think I have probably five or six different dish sets that I have going between my orange enamelware for Halloween, um, green depression glass right here, the cabbage dishes. Um, I have friendly village dishes and um, I don't know, they're just <laughs> kind of a fun thing to collect. And then through here is the kitchen. So I have a little tulip arrangement here on the center counter. And then I have added some new decor up onto the shelves. So I just found this cutting board at an antique shop for not very much. And I think it was like about 10 bucks. And then um, finally, Got my little fish mold up there and just a few other kitcheny items here. And these over here I just found at an antique shop and I just really like the white and blue coloring so I decided to get those to add to the shelf up there. And I think this green depression glass chopper is new since my previous video so that again was a fun little find. Of course, my little bee dish. <laughs> and there's where the potbelly stove cookie jar goes in its off season and also the owl cookie jar. Because it is now season for the squirrel. So he gets to sit out for the rest of the season until probably fall time. This artificial floral arrangement actually was just white tulips and I added just a few artificial orange ones into the mix just to give it a little bit more of a fuller appearance and um, to add a little bit more color in this area. So I got this last year at an antique shop and was just really excited to get this out again for another season. And my plant is finally blooming again. This thing was kind of seeming dormant for a while, so that's always exciting. And it actually got a new planter, so I think the plant's fairly happy about that. And this was another fun thing that I found at Home Goods that I just thought was really cute. And over here is the coffee area, and one of my new chicken dishes. I don't know, I just saw this and thought it was adorable. So this was from that same antique shop near us. I, I get so much of my decor from there now, it seems. But, um, but yeah, just very, very, very adorable. And then more of those eggs from Michael's, of course. And I changed out my kitchen towel over here to this little chicken one. So um, it's kind of a fun thing for Probably summer. This one will probably stay through summer. And I decided to put just a few artificial tulips in this basket in the staircase going up to the second floor. So this is what the little guest room looks like now. So this is another new paint color. Um, really changed the look of the room because it used to be, again, that very light cream. So I don't know, the dark color I just think makes it look a lot more cozy and um, just showcases the decor completely differently than it did before. And finally found a spot for this rug that I've had for over a year. Um, I just really like the way the colors looked in the room with the yellows and, or I should say kind of golden yellow colors. And this trunk came up here from the entryway closet. We used to use it to store like extra sandals and hats and different things like that in, but um, I decided it was too pretty to keep kind of in the closet. So I decided to take it out and use it here in the guest room. And I think this bed set is about where it was the last time I had a video, but in case it's not, um, if anybody was wondering, cause I get asked every once in a while, um, the deer kind of print of the bed set was from Home Goods, and these shams and this quilt was from Target. 
and those were a clearance find. And then this pillow, I think was also from Home Goods. So a mixture of a few different bedding sets to make the one bed set. And I got this cool picture hung up too. This was another neat little antique shop find. And then over here is the clawfoot tub bathroom. So not too much has changed in here since Christmas, other than I finally found kind of a neat wreath to have hung on the wall here um, in the off season after like Christmas. So this was just, I liked kind of the naturey look of it and thought that it was just the perfect accent for that wall next to the tub. And this is what the other guest room is looking like. So I changed the angle of the bed just a little bit and switched out some of the decor on this um, vintage desk. And I have a few things I need to put away and hang up, including this cute little thing that I found at an antique shop. So um, I actually have some hooks that I'm planning on hanging up in that clawfoot tub bathroom that I just haven't gotten to yet. So um, a few things on the to-do list, but slowly, slowly getting things done around the house. And I've switched around a few things in this room since Christmas time as well. So this is what the main bedroom is looking like at the moment. So I believe the dresser used to be on the other side of the room and I used to have the fireplace where this dresser is. So um, it was just kind of a fun change to switch that around a little bit. And then I brought this chair in here from the other guest room too. And move this plant in here from the hallway. <laughs> and so here is another one of those little floral arrangements I put together in that other video. So I just decided to add this on top of this old dry sink just to um, have a little bit of spring decor in the hallway here at the top of the stairs. And then here is Pape's room. So um, I kind of switched the decor around just a little bit from what it usually is in the off season. So I did hang the piano keys back up, but I just added a little bit different decor on top of the mantel. Although these books um, were here before. And then over here, the seating arrangement is pretty much about the same. I did add some of these cute little bunnies that we got from Tim's gram a few years ago um, over here just to add a little bit of spring and Easter look. And then I have this book sitting out, which is kind of fun because it's, um, let's see, the American Bird Fancier. So it's kind of a book that's about um, taking care of pet birds, so there's even a section in here about canaries, which I thought was kind of interesting because, you know, canary is what our bird is. So, um, yeah, this was a fun find that I enjoy decorating with. And over here is where Peepers is. So not too much new in his cage. We keep giving him some interesting new um, food and seeds to try, which he seems to be enjoying. And of course he gets his apple slices every once in a while, but yeah. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful spring and a great Easter.